I'm Sean Lin, and I'm a co-research director over at the Glaucoma Center of San Francisco. At the first annual Glaucoma Patient Summit, I presented on alternate therapies or alternative therapies for glaucoma. There are numerous potential uh, alternative therapies for glaucoma. I talked about marijuana, I talked about ginkgo biloba, I talked about memantine, which is a drug that's available that was tested for glaucoma neuroprotection. We also talked about acupuncture as well as you know, maintaining a good blood pressure in people who have low blood pressure. Really, the only proven therapy for glaucoma is lowering your intraocular pressure. That was said throughout the conference and uh, started off with uh, Dr. Ruth Williams talking about that really all we can do that we know of that can really uh, keep glaucoma from getting worse is to lower your intraocular pressure. So I want to make sure that patients understand that. Uh, however, there's a lot of interest, of course, from patients in what else can I do? You know, uh, things like nutritional things, lifestyle aspects, environmental aspects, and, and exercise. And I covered some of those alternative therapies. Nothing is absolutely proven to help prevent glaucoma progression, but some of the promising ones that I covered include meditation. It seems to lower intraocular pressure in a couple studies from India. Uh, I think that is not a hard thing to recommend because it's probably good for you overall. It also lowered some of the factors uh, in the blood that were associated with uh, stress and inf inflammation. So it's probably a good thing for your optic nerve. It also seemed to enhance some factors that actually may be protective of your optic nerve as well. So all good things. They also looked at uh, quality of life as well, quality of life factors, and those were improved uh, with meditation. So I think that one is uh, often an easy one to recommend to patients, and that's relatively new data just in the past year or two. Another area that, that I touched on uh, was the concept that actually low blood pressure may be bad for your optic nerve and therefore glaucoma. Uh, so people with pathologically low blood pressure, typically 90 over 60 or lower than those numbers, uh, may benefit from having their blood pressure actually increase. So some of my colleagues, uh, myself included, have uh, told those patients, that subset of patients, that maybe actually increasing salt in their intake to elevate their blood pressure may be a beneficial thing. Dr. Williams talked about, you know, uh, talking to your internist or maybe the, your ophthalmologist would talk to your internist about uh, possibly not over treating high blood pressure because those have also been associated with glaucoma worsening as well in some recent studies. So that's a, an area of active research and active interest right now. Oh, I think, I think in fact it may be maybe the most important thing for patients besides their direct relationship with their doctors because they, it gives them the opportunity to be an active participant in their care. Obviously, you can look up a lot of things on the internet. We talked about Dr. Google, you know, during the, during the uh, patient summit. But you can get a lot of misinformation. You can get some information about, well, this is the latest and greatest, you know, thing to do, whether it's true or not, or whether there's, you know, there's uh, side effects or there's other uh, things that may not be appropriate for you in your particular case can be clarified in this kind of coming to this kind of patient summit. So you get a, an, an overview of what's the latest uh, in uh, glaucoma management and taking care of yourself. Uh, and it lets you be really an active participant in your own care.